All right, Israel, Israel, I'm back with part two of Israel is like a woman to the Lord. Um, slash Israel, beca Israel became alienated from God through idols. Okay, we left off of Jeremiah 3, verse 8 to 9. We finished that. Let's jump over to Ezekiel. Let me see. Let's jump over to... Let's jump over to Ezekiel, Ezekiel 23 and verse 7. Ezekiel, uh, yeah, Ezekiel 23 and verse 7. And the Lord said, Thus she committed her whoredoms with them, with all of them that were the chosen men of Assyria. And with all on whom she doted, with all their idols, she defiled their, She defiled herself. You see, um, with all their idols, she defiled herself. So not only did the northern kingdom defile himself with the idols, but Judah also defiled themselves with the idols. You see what I'm saying? Judah also defiled himself with idols. So they both was defiled. But the Lord had to what? Cleanse them through the what? The washing of the water by the word, by the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why he had to scatter them to all the nations so that he could consume the filthiness out of them. How? By the word of God, which is spirit and life, the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, let's jump over to verse 30. I will do these things unto thee because thou hast gone a whoring after the heathen. And because thou art polluted with their what? Their idols, their gods. Their idols, their gods are devils, Israel. Okay? Let's keep going. Let's go over to Ezekiel 16 and 36. Ezekiel 16 and verse 36. Matter of fact, we can start at Ezekiel 16. We can start at verse 35. And the Lord said, Wherefore, O harlot. So he's speaking to Israel. He said, Wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. Right? Thus saith the Lord God, because thy filthiness was poured out, and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers. The, the Israel's lovers is, you know, the, the nations are women. Their lovers, Israel's lovers, is the idols. Right, they chose the stranger over the most high their husband. Okay, discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers and with all the idols of thy abominations and by the blood of thy children, which thou, which thou didst give unto them. You see, so Israel was heavy in idolatry. Israel was heavy in idol worshiping, as you can see. And when Israel is heavy in idolatry, when Israel worship idols they become alienated from the most high and the most high becomes alienated from them you see what i'm saying um idols is wicked idols is evil very wicked and very evil it's the work of man's hands which cannot save in a time of trouble right let's head over to ezekiel 23 and 30 ezekiel 23 and verse 30 I will do these things unto thee, because thou hast gone a whoring after the heathen, and because thou art polluted with their what? Polluted with their idols. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 27 to 28. Because this is what we was doing to idols, to a stock. You see what I'm saying? This is what we were saying to a stock, to an idol. Okay, Jeremiah 2, verse 27 to 28. The Lord says, saying to a stock, thou art my father. So he's saying to a stock, thou art my father, when Jesus Christ is our father, Israel. Thou art my father, and to a stone, thou hast brought me forth. And we saying to a stone, thou hast brought me forth. For See, we forgot the most high God of Israel, Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? For they have turned their back unto me, the Lord said, and not their face. But in the time of their trouble, they will they will say, arise and save us. See, in the time of our trouble, we always call on the Lord to save us from our troubles. 
Watch what he say, though. We'll say, arise and save us, verse 28. But where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? So he's asking Israel, he's asking uh, Judah, where are thy gods that thou made thee? Right? Let them arise if they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. And we know that a stone or a stock or an idol can't save or, or save in a time of trouble because it's an idol, it's a stone. It can't move, see, talk, smell, hear, save in the time of trouble. It can't do nothing because it's an idol. For according, the Lord said, for according to the number of thy cities are thy gods, O Judah. So he said, according to the number of thy cities are your gods, O Judah. Right? Let's head over Ezekiel 23 and 49. Ezekiel 23 and 49. And the Lord said, And they shall recompense your lewdness upon you, and ye shall bear the sins of your idols, and ye shall know that I am the Lord God. You see what I'm saying? So the Lord said, We shall what? You shall bear the sins of your idols. See, because the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. All right, and that's what we did against the Most High God of Israel, Jesus Christ. We committed fornication and adultery with idols. All right. Let's go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, fourteen and twenty-seven. Wisdom of Solomon, fourteen and twenty-seven. And the Lord said, for the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. Wow. So for the worshiping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. See, because when you make the idols, you curse. the idol is cursed and you are cursed. Let's jump over to um, verse 12. With, uh, Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication and the invention of them, the corruption of life and the invention of them, the corruption of life. You see that? So idols is very wicked. All right. Very evil. Let's head over to Ezekiel 16 and 38. Ezekiel 16 and verse 38. And what the Lord said to Israel, and I would judge thee as a woman. So he said, I would judge thee, Israel, as a what? As a woman, because he looks at Israel like a woman. All right. Israel is like a woman to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. So he said, I would judge thee as a woman that wet break wedlock. So he said, I would judge thee as a woman that break wedlock and shed blood are judged. And I will give thee blood and fury and jealousy. Hmm. Let's go to Isaiah 45 and 19. Isaiah 45 and 19. Isaiah 45 and 19, Israel. And the Lord said, And the Lord said, I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. So he didn't say to, to us to seek ye, um, ye him in vain, right? I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Okay, so that's why the Lord told us in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 to uh, make no images, no graven images of any likeness of man or female or birds. None of that, you know. Don't make none of that. He told us to not to do that, but then... We wanted to be like the heathen, so we started building idols in, in the land, you know, in, a, in, 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 in excuse me, in the place where his name is at, which is in um, Zion, Jerusalem, Judah. Okay, so we started building idols in the land, and we defiled the land, and we became defiled through these idols, and shedding blood in the land, and, you know, due to our sins. That's what it's all about, Israel. Okay, let's head over to Wisdom of Solomon. 
14 and 11. Yeah, Wisdom, Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 11. Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 11. And the Lord said, therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles, there should be a visitation. So the Lord said, even upon the, the Gentiles, there's going to be a visitation. Because in the creature of God, they are become an abomination and what stumbling blocks to the souls of men and a snare to the feet of the unwise. See these idols. And who brought the idols in the world? The Gentiles. The heathen. They brought the gen they brought the idols into this world. You see, and that's why the Lord gonna punish them for that. Okay, let's head over to Ezekiel 14. Ezekiel 14, verse 1 to 7. Ezekiel 14, 1 to 7. Then came the uh, then then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their what? In their heart, and put the stumbling block. Then we read about that wisdom of Solomon 14 and 11. Of, an, of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? See? So that's why the Lord hid his face from us. And we ain't hear from the Lord in, in a while, you know? And then the Lord came, you know, um, in the New Testament, he came in the flesh. The word was made flesh. That was God, you know? And he came and died for the sins of Israel. He died for the sins of Israel the children that he that God had given him out of the world of Israel, right? He came for his lost sheep that the father gave to him, right? And he died for their sins. And um, yeah, he died for their sins. And then, you know, the Lord ascended back up into heaven. The Lord um, died and was raised on the third day by God's spirit. And he ascended into heaven and sat on the right hand of, of the Father, Jesus Christ. Okay? Until his enemies has made his footstool. And then Judah was scattered. Once he left, you know, then the Roman Empire came and, you know, surrounded Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was trodden down, you know, of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. And, um, yeah. In uh, 70 AD, Judah, Judah was scattered to the four corners of the earth. So the Lord scattered Judah to the four corners of the earth to cleanse the filthiness out of them. You see, to cleanse the filthiness out of them by the gospel of Jesus Christ, the word of God. You see? And they will be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And then Christ will come and redeem them. That's why he said, when you see these things come to pass, the signs he gave Israel to, to look, you know, the wars and rumors of wars and things going on. He said, what? Look up for your redemption, draw nigh. All right. But only the Lord Jesus Christ knows when the time, day or the hour of when the affliction of Zion is fulfilled. When he's coming to get his children. Only he knows that time and day and hour. No man, nobody else know that time, day, or the hour. That's why I, I showed. That's why I wanted to show you that the, the four hundred year prophecy is was in the time of Abraham, in the time of Egypt, because you know us saying the four hundred years is up and our return. Then we saying basically, if we we saying it's talking about now, that we basically saying we know the time, day, or the hour. But the Bible says no man knows the time, day, or the hour, but the Lord. You know, so I had to show you that the 400 year prophecy was in the time of Egypt, which it was, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah. And, uh, that's that. See, we sitting and waiting, thinking the 400 year prophecy is talking about now. And we just think that we going to go back home, you know, just only looking on the outside, being the outside appearance of Israel. But a lot of us ain't worrying about being Israel in the inward, man. That's what it's really about. We just think, oh, just because we look like this, we're automatically going back to the land. Nah, we got to be changed. We got to be born again here. We got to be born again here, Israel. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's what it's about. 
You, you got to be born again because the kingdom is within you, within you changing yourself. You see what I'm saying? You got to be conformed into the image of God's son. You got to be translated into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ. That's why that's why Paul said um, to spouse you to one husband, you know, um, to Jesus. You see what I'm saying? Because we got to be blameless in the day of the Lord coming. We think only looking on the outside appearance, that's enough. But you got to be righteous and, and holy inside. Because Israel is the temple of God. And God is holy. Okay, so it's more than just the outside appearance, Israel. You got to understand that. So the time, see, that's why the Bible says the long suffering, um, the long suffering of the Lord is salvation. What did Jesus say? Patience, you possess your souls because though this outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed day by day. That's what it's about. Though this outward part is perishing, you know, but the inward is being renewed day by day because you got to be born again. You see, Jesus said, except the man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except the man is born again of the spirit and water, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You got to be born again by the gospel of Jesus Christ. You got to be cleansed. That's what the Lord said. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you should be clean. That's the word, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, so that's very important. Let's keep going. Okay, so the Lord said, let's read verse 3 again. The Lord says, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired at, of, at all by them? The Lord hid his face from Israel. Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart. In his heart. And putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet. I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of, of his idols. Excuse me. That I may take the house of Israel in their own heart. Because they are all estranged. What did the Lord say? Because they are all estranged from me through their idols. You see that? So the Lord just said the house of Israel is all estranged from him through their idols. Because we're defiled and we defiled the land. You see the idols is stumbling blocks. That's why the Lord was very heavy on don't make any graven images of any likeness of any male or female, anything. And this is what the heathen do, as you can see, even to our time we're in, because there's nothing new under the sun. Because the heathen don't know the most high God of Israel, Jesus Christ. So the Lord just said, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. You see that? Okay. Let's keep going. Verse 6. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. For every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel which separateth himself from me and setteth up his idols, his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to a, prop, a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I the Lord will answer him by myself. You see? Verse 8. And I will set my face against that man, and I will make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. You shall be Verse 10, 
and they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. Verse 11, that the house of Israel may go no more astray. What did the Lord say? That the house of Israel may go no more astray. And he said we was, Israel is all estranged. All Israel's is, um, they are all estranged from me through their idols. So what the Lord said, verse 11, that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people and I may be their God, save the Lord God. You see what I'm saying? So through the idols, we become estranged from the Most High. You see, through the idols, Israel. Let's go to Ezekiel 23. Ezekiel 23, Ezekiel 23, verse 14 and 18. Ezekiel 23, verse 14 to 18. And that she increased her whoredoms. Wait, let me see. Oh. Oh, yeah. Ezekiel 23, 14 to 18. And that she increased her whoredoms, for when she saw men betrayed upon the wall, the images of the Chaldeans, betrayed with vermilion, girded with girdles, upon their loins, exceeding and died a tear upon their heads, all of them princes to look to after the men of the Babylonians of Chaldea, the land of their nativity. And as soon as she saw them, with her eyes she doted upon them, and sent messages unto them in child into Chaldea and the Babylon and the Babylonians came into her in the bed of love uh, Judah and the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love and they defiled her with their whoredom and she was polluted with them and her mind was alienated from them so she discovered her whoredoms and discover her nakedness then my mind the Lord said was alienated from her you see through these idols. That's why he said they're all estranged from me through their idols. You see? So she discovered her whoredoms and discovered her nakedness. Then my mind, the Lord said, was alienated from her. Like as my mind was alienated from her sister, the ten tribes of Israel. The northern kingdom. You see that? So we become alienated um, from the most high through these idols, Israel. Let's jump over to 19 and 22. Yet she multiplied her whoredoms and calling to remembrance the days of her youth wherein she played the harlot. She had played the harlot in the land of Egypt for she doted upon their paramours whose flesh is as the flesh of asses and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Thou, uh, thus thou callest to remembrance the lewdness of thy youth, thy youth and bruising thy teats, and bruising thy teats by the Egyptians for the paps of thy youth. Verse 22. Therefore, Aholabah, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will raise up thy lovers against thee, from whom thy mind is alienated, and I will bring them against thee on every side. Those nations. So he brought Israel lovers to the land. You see what I'm saying? Who you think was... Uh, the ba then the Babylonians come and uh, surrounded Jerusalem and took them. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar took them to Babylon captivity for the 70 years. Then the Syrians come and take the northern kingdom. You see, so the Lord raised up their Israel own lovers against them. Okay. 22. And I will bring them against thee on every side. Let's jump down to 28. Verse 28. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will deliver thee into the hand of them whom thou hatest, into the hand of them from whom thy mind is alienated. From whom thy mind is alienated. From whom thy mind is alienated. Right?
from whom thy mind is alienated. Let's jump over to Ezekiel 14 and 5 again. That I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged. So the Lord said they are all estranged from me through their what? Idols. So let's read verse 17. Let's read verse Ezekiel 23, 17, and 18 again. Ezekiel 23, 17, and 18. And the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love, and they defiled her with their whoredom, and she was polluted with them, and her mind was alienated from them. So she discovered her whoredoms and discovered her nakedness. Then my mind, the Lord said, was alienated from her. You see that? Like as my mind was alienated from her sister, the northern kingdom. So we become alienated from God through these idols. And the Lord become, um, then the Lord become alienated from us. You see what I'm saying? Because of those idols, Israel. Let's jump over to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, 17 to 19. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, right? Having the understanding darkened, being alienated, right? Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Verse 19, who being past filling, having given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work to work all uncleanness with greediness. So the Bible said, be not like the other Gentiles who walk in the vanity of their mind, having to understand the dark and being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Right? Let's head over to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verse 21 to 23. Galatians chapter 1, verse 21 to 23. And you that were sometime alienated, who is this talking to? Who, was, who did we read that was alienated from God in the Old Testament? The Israelites. So the New Testament is talking to the Israelites. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, Yet now have he, Jesus Christ, reconciled because he reconciled the 12 tribes of Israel through his body back to God. Now they put on a new man, the new creature in Christ, staying away from the idols, blood, and the fornication because they are the temple of God. Because he's going to dwell in them. And the Lord said he will put his spirit in them. And enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have he reconciled. Yet now have he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, you see, and unblameable and reprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. And the, uh, if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature, which is under heaven, wherefore I, Paul, and made a minister. The gospel had to be preached to all nations so Israel can hear it. Because the Gentiles who are Jews, which is us, scattered to all nations, and the northern kingdom also has to hear it too. And the Jews that were born in the land in the time of Paul and Christ, some of the Jews in the land that was born in the land believed on the gospel. Okay? Of Jesus Christ. So, which was preached to every creature, right? The gospel. After you heard the, the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and after you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You see, God's elect, God's saints, is going to do the will of God. They're going to stay away from the flesh and walk in the spirit. See, they woke up, so they, they changed themselves when they heard the gospel, and they stayed away from the idols, and they, they, they changed themselves. They put on a new creature in Christ. The old man has passed away. They became a new creature in Christ. So they stayed away from the pagan holidays and the lands 
we're born in we are the Gentiles, Jews. Okay? Um let go of all the pagan holidays and all of that stuff and idol worshiping and we let you know the saints whoever they are the, the elect they let all that stuff go and they became a new creature after they heard the gospel okay because they're going to do the will of the lord the saints the elect let's go to ephesians chapter 2 ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 to 13 ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 to 13 Matter of fact, let's start at 11. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 to 13. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past, past in the fleshy before they heard the gospel, the word of truth. They, they were Gentiles in the flesh. But not no more. They became, they became together through Christ. You see? So they are no more astray from the Most High. They let the idols go. The saints and the elect. They're going to do the will of the Lord. So in times past, they were Gentiles in the flesh. Who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Okay. And the circumcision of Christ is putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. Verse 12. That, and that at that time you were without Christ. You see, just like Cornelius, he was a Jew born from another nation. You see what I'm saying? At, that at that time you were without Christ, being what? Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Right? Verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes will fall off. Um, Judah was scattered to the four corners of the earth, the northern kingdom. Is called Gentiles too, just like Jews are called Gentiles. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes will fall off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. So they're made nigh by the blood of Christ, right? Because they have faith in his name and blood. They believe the gospel, right? Let's jump down to verse 17. And came and preached peace to you who will fall off, James 1 and 1, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings and came and preached peace to you which will fall off into them that were not. Right? I preached. Let's head over to Acts chapter 2. Head over to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 39. Acts chapter 2, verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children, to Israel, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Did we just read that? That those that were far off and made nigh by the blood of Christ, those are Israelites. Right? To all that are far off, even as many as the Lord shall call. Because all is called, but few are chosen. So, the chosen, like I said, they're the elect of God. They're the saints. They're going to do the will of the Lord. Let's go to Daniel 9 and 7. Daniel chapter 9. Who is far off and who is not? Let's find out. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 7. O Lord, Daniel said, O Lord, O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces as at this day. To the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off. You see that? Through all the countries, whither thou hast driven them because of their trespasses that they have trespassed against thee. So the New Testament, when it, the, the New Testament say, oh, to those that are far off, those are Israelites. I just showed you in Daniel 9 and 7. Let's go to 1 Peter 1 and 1. 1 Peter. First Peter 1 and 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers. Didn't it say, and uh, 
didn't it say? Then the word say in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 12, that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. The strangers is Israelites. First Peter 1 and 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers that scattered. Then we just read in Daniel 9 and 7 that all Israel is scattered to the countries. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers uh, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bethania. You see? Verse 2, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So notice it said Asia, right? Because, see, notice it said Asia. I know I did a lesson about who the Gentiles is. I'm just going to show this real quick. <clears throat> Acts chapter 21 this, about Paul right Acts chapter 21 and 27 and when the seven days were almost ended the Jews which were of Asia the Jews which were which were of Asia when they saw him in the temple stirred up all the people and laid hands on him Paul right there were Jews of Asia you see what I'm saying the Jews is everywhere they were called Gentiles. They were called strangers. But now they are no more called strangers. They they were without hope. They were without, at that time, they were without Christ. But now they are made nigh. Again, they're in the family of Israel through, the, through Christ, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus Christ, by faith in his blood, through his gospel. Okay? Let's go over to Acts chapter 2. I'm just going to go over it a little bit. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, 5 to 11. Right? This is the day of Pentecost. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. So when the day of Pentecost came, these Jews from all nations under heaven came to the day of Pentecost. They were born in these all the nations. And they came from those nations where they were born, but they were Jews. You see what I'm saying? Acts chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speaking in his own language. You see? They were speaking from their own language wherever they were born at, right? And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? See, they were all Jews that came from all the nations to the day of Pentecost. And how we hear every man in our own tongue where we were born. See, they were born in these nations, every nation under heaven, but they, they were still Jews. Even though they were called Gentiles, like Cornelius, they were called Gentiles and strangers. See, but through the gospel, they're back in Israel. They're back in the family of Israel. Verse 9. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia. Right? I think we read that in First Peter. First Peter chapter one and one, right? Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, is a stranger scattered throughout Pontus, Galilee, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bethania. Right? So these were Jews that were born in these lands. Okay, in Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia. You see that? Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome because there were Jews also in Rome. There was Jews also in Rome too. Bear with me for a minute, Israel. I 
know it's somewhere over here. Let me see. Should be coming up to it. God knows what I mean, Jesus name. Amen. 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 Preaching the word. Yeah. Acts chapter 18 and verse 2. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, which uh, with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. All Jews to depart from where? Rome. Jews is all over the world, Israel. Judah, Judah is all over the world. You see what I'm saying? Judah was only scattered to all the nations, not the ten tribes. Okay? Ten tribes are still together. And the Lord knows only where they at. All right. So where we left off Acts chapter 2 and 10. Per, uh, per, uh, Pragia and Pepeliah in Egypt in the parts of Libya, 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 about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. Proselytes. Um, a proselyte is just one that's converting. That's all. That's why the, the Bible says, Jesus said, um, Lest they shall see with their eyes and, ear, and hear what there is and convert and I shall heal them. How? Through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because they, they Israel got to convert, change from their ways. Where the, the Jews who are Gentiles, you know, in the northern kingdom have to change from their ways where the places they were born at. And their customs and idol worship, they got to let all that go and convert so Christ can heal them. How we heal through the word of Jesus Christ. Like it says in Psalms 107 and 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Right? Second Edge chapter 7 and 69. And being judged, if he should not forgive them that are cured, that are cured with his word. You see that? And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, the Israelites, with his word and put out the multitude of contentions, see, because we were sick, but the Lord had to come and heal us. Like he said, and let me see if I can find a God that was willing in Jesus' name. Amen. I know it's in Exodus. Like the Lord always told us in the book of Exodus. Exodus 15 and 26 and said, if thou will, the Lord said to Israel and said, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Who? Israel. You see what I'm saying? The Lord is the one that healeth Israel. Right? Just like when uh, the Lord, see, the Lord is the one that sanctifies Israel also. Um, give me one second. Yeah, well, yeah, give me a minute. Let me see if I can find it. The truth, that word is the truth. I think it's here. See, the Lord is the one that healeth Israel only. Okay. Exodus 30, 31 and 18. Let's go to Exodus 31 and 18. Exodus 31 and 18. Wait, is it 18? Oh, sorry. The Exodus 31 and 13. 
The Lord says, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbath, Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. So the Lord is the one that healed Israel. He's the one that sanctifies Israel. That's why Jesus, when the Lord Jesus Christ, God came in the flesh, what did he say in John 17 and 17? He said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is the truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sake, for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. What is the truth? The word is the truth. Then he say, I'm the Lord that sanctify you. I'm the Lord that healeth thee. It's all talking to the children of Israel. The most high don't change. Let's go back to the book of Acts. Go back to the book of Acts. We left off. Acts chapter 2. All right, and proselytes. So we finish off at the bottom of 10. Acts chapter 2, two and 10. Jews and proselytes, verse 11. Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. You see that? Now, all right. See, because it was a, it was in a prophecy from Joel. When you go over to uh, Peter, is going to let them let them know. So they said, let's read from verse twelve. So they said, and they were all amazed, and were in doubt, saying one to another, "What mean of this?" This others mock and say, "These men are full of new wine." But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, "Ye men of Judea, who did he say he speak to?" Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, only Israel he's speaking to, be it known unto you, and hearken to my words, for these are, for these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is, but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, who was an Israelite. And it shall come to pass in the last days, say of God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh to Israel. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out, uh, pour out it in those days, in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Okay. You see, and they shall prophesy. It's all talking to the children of Israel. See, that, that was the prophecy. He was letting them know when they came to. The, about the Jews that could hear themselves in their own language and they came to the days of Pentecost, he was letting them know all the Jews that was born from other nations that they came to the day of Pentecost, which we just read. He, Peter was letting them know that that's the prophecy which was spoken in Joel. Let's go to Joel chapter 2. In verse 27, ye shall know, the Lord said, and ye shall know, that I am in the midst of Israel, and I am the Lord your God, and none else. He's not the God of everybody. And my people shall never be ashamed. Verse 28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days I will pour out my spirit. You see that? In those days will I pour out my spirit. He's talking to all Israel. Right. That's why when you go over to Acts chapter two and twenty one. OK, the Bible says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right. Let's go back to Joel. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right. At, uh, Joel chapter two, and verse thirty two. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered, delivered, saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. He didn't say the whole entire world. As the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call, right? Remember Acts chapter 2 and 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized. Oh, I'm sorry. Acts chapter 2 and 39. For the promises unto you, who? Israel. And to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. We just read that in Joel chapter 2 and 32. I think it was 32, right? Joel chapter 2 and 32. Yeah. And the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Right? Acts chapter 2, 21 to 22. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call in the name of the Lord shall be saved. We just know. We read from Joel 2 and 31 who it was. And the Lord going to let you know right here in the New Testament 
who it is that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 22, ye men of Israel hear these words. So the Bible just says, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel hear these words. It is say the whole entire planet. Ye men of Israel hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a, a man approved of God among you by miracles. Because Jesus was only among the Israelites. By you, um, among you, by miracles and wonders and signs which God, which God did by him in the midst of you, the Israelites, as ye yourselves also know. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Mm -hmm. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word Jesus only went to the children of Israel. That's why he said, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he told his 12 apostles, go not into the way of the Gentiles or into any Samar cities of the Samaritans, because Christ went to the lady in Samaria by the well. But he said, rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay. Let's go to John 11. We almost finished Israel. John 11, 51 to 52. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, the Jews, and not for that nation only, but also that he should gather together in one, the children of God that were scattered abroad. James 1 and 1 to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad. First Peter 1 and 1. Let's go to Ezekiel because it was a prophecy. That's why the Lord showed Ezekiel the prophecy, prophecy of the two sticks coming together. Because that Israel will become one through Jesus Christ. Gathered together one, the children of God that are scattered abroad. Israel, all Israel. Ezekiel 37, 15 to 23. Ezekiel 37, 15 to 23. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah, that's the southern kingdom, and and for the children of Israel, his companions, then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, the northern kingdom, the twelve tribe, um, the ten tribes of Israel, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Will thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus save the Lord, thus save the Lord God. Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph which is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with uh, will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah. You see that? And make them one stick. They should gather together in one, the children of God that were scattered abroad, Jesus Christ, through his body, he reconciled twain into one by Jesus' body, the southern and northern kingdom of Israel. Them one stick because they were split in the time of Solomon. And they shall be one in my hands, and the sticks were were on thou writest shall be in thy hand before their eyes. Verse twenty one, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God: Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen. So where they were at, among the heathen, let you know Israelites is scattered to the nations, whether they be gone and whether gather and will gather them on every side. Jacob Israel before he died said. To his son Judah, the power shall not depart from Judah, nor the Lord give it from between his feet to Shilah, come that's Jesus Christ, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. We'll gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. Verse 22. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, Jesus Christ. And they shall be no more what? Two nations, the southern and northern kingdom, because they're one in the body of Christ. They're no more twain, but they're one with Christ, and they are one with God. They are one with God through Jesus Christ's body. Be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Keep that word divided in, in mind. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols, because mm, he's going to cleanse them through the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's all talking to Israel. They, they're not going to be alienated from God through their idols no more through the gospel of Jesus Christ because he scattered them to all nations to consume the filthiness out of Israel by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Cleansing them with the water, the word of Jesus, uh, the word Jesus Christ. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions, but I will save them. Who the Lord say you're going to save? 
Israel. And I will save them out of all their dwelling places where they have sinned and will cleanse them. He said he's going to cleanse Israel. So shall they be my people and I will be their God. Right. So keep the word. I mean, he said they shall neither be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Right. Keep that in mind, though. Let's go to John 7 and 35. That's why the Jews ask Christ this. They ask Christ this right here. John, John 7 and 35. The Jews ask Christ. What did he say? Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed, the scattered among the Gentiles, and teach the Gentiles? James 1 and 1, to the strangers which are scattered abroad, greet to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. See, the Jews were called Gentiles who were born in the Gentile nations. Let's go to 1 Peter 2 and 11. 1 Peter 2 and 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, as what? As, pil as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. See, then we read in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 12, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But uh, 13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off or made nigh by the blood of Christ. Israelites. James 1 and 1. James 1 and 1, James the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Let's go to, now, now let's go back to Ezekiel 37 because I want you to keep that in mind. Ezekiel 37 and 23. Remember I said to keep the word division, right? Let's read that again, Ezekiel 37 and 22. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more. Matter of fact, hold that real quick. Let's go to Hosea real quick, because I want to show you that they were going to be one too. When the Lord was talking um, to Hosea. Um, yeah, in the book of Hosea, the word of the Lord. All right, let's go to... Hosea 1 and 11. Then shall the children of Judah, that's the southern kingdom, and the children of Israel be gathered together. Who are they going to be gathered together? By Shelah, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And appoint themselves what? One head. So they're going to be gathered together, the southern and the northern kingdom, and, and appoint themselves what? One head. Um, and also that he may gather together in one the children of God that is scattered abroad. Appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jazz real, right? Great shall be the day of Jazz real. See, the Lord was in the Old Testament, the Lord was was telling Israel that they're gonna be one. Again, Ephesians chapter one. And ten. Ephesians one and ten. That ended that ended the excuse me, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. You see that? That's why Jesus was telling, to, talking to the father. He said that what? They may be one as we are one. The children whom God have given to Christ. John 17 and 9, I pray for them, for the children whom God have given him. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. They belong to the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Father in heaven, right? Because Jesus has God's elect, right? Verse 10, and all mine are thine, because Jesus is one with God, because the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost is one. And thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Verse 11, and now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. He went back up to heaven, Jesus Christ, and sat on the right hand of God until his enemies has made his footstool. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep them, keep through thy own name those 
whom thou hast given me that they may be that they may be one as we are that's why he said i and my father are one as we are right let's jump over to verse 22 and the glory which thou gavest me i have given them that they may be one even as we are one verse 23 i and them and thou and me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me you see that okay that's why in the beginning in genesis that's why the lord said let us make man in our image he's talking to the children of israel israel is going to be made in the lord's image because christ is the image of the invisible god and christ was only sent to the 12 tribes of israel Okay, so now let's go back to Ezekiel. We almost finished. We got a few more scriptures. Ezekiel 37, and let's read 22. And the Lord said, Ezekiel 37, 22, and I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided. Keep that word divided in mind, divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Let's go to Ephesians. Chapter 2. Let's head over to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And verse 14. For he is our peace who have made both one, Jesus, and have broken down the middle wall of petition. What does petition mean? Division. See, then remember I said in Ezekiel 37 and 22. He said they would neither be divided anymore. That's why I said keep that word divided because petition means what? Division. Divided. Because they're not divided anymore like he said to Ezekiel about the prophecy because they're not divided anymore because they're one in the body of Jesus Christ. When he died on the tree on the cross, he reconciled the southern and the northern kingdom back to becoming one again through his body so that's why they are the church of god they are the body of christ you see what i'm saying they are one with christ because christ is one with god so they are one with god for he is our peace who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of petition division or dividing between us having abolished in his flesh the enmity enmity the hatred even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain that's two one new man, so making peace. That's why you put off the old man and put on a new man in Christ. You have to put on Christ that they may be conformed into the image of God's son. That they may be translated into the kingdom of his dear son. All right. So making one new man, so making peace. He made peace, right? 16, and that he might reconcile both southern and northern kingdom unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity, the hatred thereby. You see that? Verse 18, for through whom we both have access by one spirit unto the Father, back to Jesus the Father. Verse 19, now therefore ye are no more strangers. Remember we call strangers and, you know, we, without that time we had no hope without God. Uh, we have no we had no hope but now in christ jesus you who sometimes were far from me now by the blood of christ now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow but, but fellow uh, excuse me but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of god you see that yeah and i'm just going to end it with this one because the Lord already said they would be scattered to all nations if they broke his commandments. Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone, because we never knew idols, because we always knew the living God, Jesus Christ. But the heathen brought the idols into this world so it's going to be a visitation upon the heathen for that by the lord and he ain't playing no games okay so that's the end israel um i hope this video was very edifying and uh i'll see you on the next part of the big lesson which will be
Give me a second. God, Lord's willing, in Jesus' name. Okay, I'm not sure what's going to be next. I'm going to have to look through it first, and then I'll drop it and let you know. Let me. I, I got to sort, sort it out and go through it. All right, but I hope this video is very edifying, Israel. Now you see that through idols, we become alienated from God, and he become alienated from us, so he hid his face from us. You see, the Lord hid his face from us, you see, and we became estranged, you know. So now, but Israel... The saints the elect, they are going to be, that, that's going to do the will of the Lord. Stay away from the flesh, walk in the spirit, believe on Christ. Right? Stay away from the flesh, walk in the spirit, they're going to do the will of the Lord. They are reconciled. They are no more strangers. They are called no more Gentiles. They have put on Christ, put on a new man. Um, They're going to be born again. They're going to change themselves and, and, and be born again in the word of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ. All right? So, idols. Stay away from idols, Israel. All right, so I hope this video is very edifying. I love you. We have to do the will of the Lord. Stay away from the flesh, walk in the spirit. On that note, um, all praise and glory to the most high God of Israel, Jesus Christ, and his word, wisdom, and son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth. I love you, Israel. See you on the next part of the big lesson. God is willing in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.